Hey everyone, a very good morning to all of you. Myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. So let's quickly begin today's class. Guys, this is the live schedule for RBI SEBI and NABARD course and this is our mobile application. I hope all of you are aware of it. Okay, the very first question that we have is with which company has MEITY startup hub partnered to launch the XR Technologies startup? So guys, here the right answer is option E Meta. Now, what is the crux of this news? First of all, know this fact that this is the hub or you can say a channel of the Ministry of Electronics and IT to provide support to the startups. So here a specific program has been launched by this hub, which is named as XR Technology Startups Program to give the financial and techn technical support to the startups who are working in the field of extended reality. So this XR stands for the extended reality. Now, what is extended reality? Reality, which is a reality, but not the real. So your virtual reality, augmented reality, all such technologies are, come under the purview of this extended reality. So all the startups who are working to develop new solutions using the virtual reality technology or the augmented reality and such technologies, those startups will get the support from this hub. I hope this much is clear. Now let's move into the details. Okay, so I hope that this much is clear. I have already explained to you the basic purpose of this uh, program. Now, under this program, a grant of rupees 20 lakh would be given to each and every uh, winner. And winner, kehlo, ya fir you ke, uh, ye kehlo ki selected startups ko di jayegi. So, these selected startups would be 14 numbers. So, 40 early stage startups would get 20 lakh rupees as funding support from the startup hub of the Ministry of Electronics and this fund would be sourced from Meta's XR programs and research fund and the total worth of this fund is $50 million. So not only providing the, uh, not only Meta is providing the technical support but it is also providing the financial support to the startup hub and precisely because of this the Ministry's startup hub has partnered with this private company. So that is the basic idea. I hope this program is clear. Now, as far as the implementing agencies of the XR startup program are concerned, so this is the list. There are four uh, agencies which are implementing this startup program. First is International Institute of Information Technology in Hyderabad. This AICSMU Technology Business Incubation Foundation, Sikkim, Gujarat University Startup and Entrepreneurship Council, Ahmedabad. Foundation for Innovation and Technology Transfers, IIT Delhi. So these are the four implementing agencies of this initiative. Now, there would be a question in your mind whether you have to remember these agencies or not. So guys, for that question, I have two answers. First is, yes, of course, you have to remember it. But the reason behind this is that this is the government initiative. And secondly, you should remember these agencies now because it will help you in retaining these facts if you have remembered it now and if you revise it timely then when your examination will come up in uh, march april or may whenever the examination is there these facts would be there in your mind and you would not have to take a lot of burden to memorize these facts you just have to revise it once okay so abhi dimag mein koi tension nahi hai koi anxiety nahi hai so try to memorize such facts and try to go into the details of the news because right now your mind is relaxed. You don't have any examination coming. When the examination is there, you have an invisible burden in your mind, which does not let you to understand things and memorize a lot of facts. So why not use the present time? Okay, so use it and remember them, these facts. Moving on to the next question. Union Health Minister will organize the Raktadan Amrit Mohatsav a nationwide voluntary blood donation drive. So what is the date of the Mohatsa? So here guys, the right answer is option B. 17th September to 1st October is the date. And why is this drive ending on 1st October? Because we celebrate National Voluntary Blood Donation Day on this day. Now, one more important fact that is e Kosh portal has been launched and this portal is for the donors who can register themselves 
on this portal and just go to the facility and donate the blood hassle free so that is the basic idea behind launching this e rakt kosh portal and the people can also register by using the arogya setu application so these are the two methods through which you can donate your blood by registering yourself and i should say if you are a healthy individual you should donate your blood okay the next question is beta kuruba is the scheduled tribe in which state so here guys option a karnataka is the right answer um okay so recently what has happened ministry of tribal affairs has proposed certain tribes from different states to be included into the national list of scheduled tribes so union cabinet has approved the tribes to be included into that national list so let's have a look at the tribes so a total of five states have been chosen and from those five states these communities or tribes have been selected for entry into the national list so first is Hathi community from Himachal Pradesh. Second is Gonds from Uttar Pradesh. Then Nari Koravan from uh, Tamil Nadu. Beta Guruba from Karnataka. And twelve caste communities have get uh, have got an entry into the national tribal list. Okay. So these are the communities. These are the tribes which have got an entry into the list. Now you would be thinking whether you have to remember these facts or not. So here my opinion is you can leave it as of now because you don't have any examination coming up. So there are very meek chances that this question would be there in your examination seven eight months up ahead. Okay, so you can definitely leave the names of these communities. Then why did I put this question here? So my intention behind this is to clarify the doubt of the students who ask me that ma'am i have an sc certificate issued by my state whether it will be applicable in rbi sebi or nabad examination or not so my friends let me give you a clarity over here i'll just take 2 to 3 minutes and then i will move ahead to the question so sc and st list both of these are released by the Union government, okay. Only the states can give the recommendation to the union that you can include this caste into the scheduled caste list or this tribe into the scheduled tribe list. And you can very well see this phenomenon happening here. Clearly, see this statement. Union cabinet has approved the proposal of Ministry of Tribal Affairs for the inclusion of certain tribes from certain states into the national list. so understand this point scst list is released by the center and therefore the central list or the central certificate is only applicable if you have any kind of state certificate that is not at all applicable at the central job level or at the state job level because state does not have the power to issue the sc or st certificates on the other hand obc certificates can be issued by the center and the states as well okay and this is the contentious point because many students ask me this fact so central if you have an obc certificate issued by the center then that certificate would be applicable in all the central jobs like your rbi sebi and nabad okay and if suppose you belong to odisha and you have odisha pcs coming up and if odisha pcs odisha government allows the central certificate as applicable or as valid then only you can use the center's obc certificate and if the state government says that you need to obtain the state pcs sorry state obc certificate then you have to obtain that only so whenever we have the state jobs your state issued obc certificate is required and the jobs like rbi sebi and nabad which are the regulatory body regulatory bodies at the national level their centrally issued certificates are required so if you don't have the centrally issued certificates as of now do uh, try to prepare them okay do try to issue them because when you have your examination in the next year you won't have time and in the notification also you are asked to obtain the certificate for one year or that is the time period okay so you must have the latest obc or scst certificate so if your certificate is expiring or it is old then you need to renew that okay i hope that this much is clear so 
if the notification comes out then it should not be a doubt in your minds now now what is it this is the constitution scheduled tribes order 1950 and this order was released and in this order only all the scheduled tribes are mentioned okay so that is the um, order and if you remember that some time back darlong community community from nagaland has also got a place in this constitutional scheduled tribe order 1950 only by virtue of the constitutional scheduled tribe amendment uh, scheduled tribe order amendment bill 2022 so that was the bill which was introduced to amend this bill to include the darlong community in this list so that was the fact that i wanted to highlight here i hope that this picture is visible to all of you you can clearly skip reading all such facts because these are not important for your life and for examination moving ahead tamil nadu has declared a uh, nanjarayan tank in tirupur district as a bird sanctuary how many bird sanctuaries are present in tamil nadu after this latest addition so here 17 bird sanctuaries uh, are located and this is the 17th bird sanctuary the next question is with which company has indore smart city signed an mou for implementing a fully digital addressing system so here guys very easy to understand or guess even it is pata navigations pata is your address the word in hindi pata means address so what is the basic idea the basic idea behind this mou is to create an application that would provide the addresses online it, it will it will definitely help in the navigation from one place to another like we have the google gps system right now in the gps we do not uh, we are not able to locate the exact addresses we can locate the localities we can know about the particular location but we are not able to locate an address of a person so that is done by this pata navigation and for that indore has signed an mou and i hope all of you are aware that indore is the cleanest city as well as a smart city so indore has become the first city in india to enter into this kind of a partnership to develop a pata navigation application okay that is the basic idea behind this partnership and one more important fact here is that this pata navigation is partnering with isro for developing this system okay because satellites would be needed to track the address and that support will be provided by isro only next question is which state has stopped in the implementation of mission amrit sarovar by developing a total of uh, 8462 amrit sarovars in the state so here guys uttar pradesh is the right answer so i hope all of you remember that amrit sarovar mission was launched by prime minister in jammu kashmir however uh, at the time of launch it was announced that 75 amrit sarovars were created in jammu kashmir okay so i uh, i want to clarify this fact here that 75 ma amrit sarovars will be clear will be covered or you can say developed in jammu kashmir as as far as the entire india is concerned then there are many more lakes which, uh, which will be redeveloped under this amrit sarovar program and as far as its implementation is concerned so uttar pradesh has stopped because it has rejuvenated 8462 lakes and now these lakes have become the amrit sarovars madhya pradesh is second in the rank and then we have jammu kashmir at third rajasthan fourth and tamil nadu fifth in terms of implementation within uttar pradesh lakhimpur kheri has secured the first position because it has constructed 256 amrit sarovars so this fact is not at all important as of now now as far as the state's ambition is concerned so uttar pradesh has set an ambitious target for itself to create 1.2 lakh amrit sarovars now creation means the rejuvenation we are going to rejuvenate or uh, what you can say refurbish the lakes and its surrounding area so that is the basic idea so this is guys the amrit sarovar mission and you can clearly see हम सब मिलकर एक काम कर सकते हैं हम संकल्प करें कि इस वर्ष प्रति प्रतिपदा से अगले वर्ष प्रतिपदा तक हर जिले में 
75 Amrit Sarovar Banayenge. So this is the statement by Narendra Modi. So it is also a target. Okay. So do remember. Now on that note, tell me how many districts are present in India as of now. The next question is which of the following Indian rulers has connections with the historical city of Samarkand in Uzbekistan? So uh, I guess this is uh, the question which is out of blue here. It is nowhere connected to your current affairs. But if you are thinking on that line, then you are wrong, my friends, because it is very well connected to your current affairs. Now, first, let me give you the answer of this question. The answer is Babar. So Babar had involved. Uh, Babar had uh, seized this city of Samarkand, and he had uh, born in Uzbekistan only. Fargana was the area where he uh, was born, and then he went to Samarkand, then he went to Kabul, and then he came to India. So this is the journey, and a very beautiful web series on his journey has been created by Hotcha, the Empire. So I hope you have seen that, and if you haven't seen that yet, then do. Uh, do take out time to watch that uh, series. It is very beautiful. Okay, बहुत ही अच्छे तरीके से उन्होंने समझा रखा. Okay, so the twenty second edition of SEO summit is going to be held in Samarkand, Uzbekistan, and from there the connection has been drawn in the question. Now, as far as SEO is concerned, first of all, remember there was no theme assigned to this summit as of now. If a theme is assigned when the summit takes place then i will inform you about that so the summit is happening september 15 to 16 only and let's see what are the outcomes of the summit because after the end of the summit we will come to know about the decisions or declarations made during the summit one more fact related to seo is that it is headquartered in beijing and these are the members of this organization now you would find that iran is missing So, guys, Iran's decision whether to include Iran into SCO or not, that decision will be taken during this summit only. So, after the end of this summit, we will get to know whether Iran has been included as a member on the SCO board or not. As of now, we have these many members, and Iran got the approval to get a membership of this SCO. Okay, so it's a bit complicated, uh, but as of now, the status is this. Okay, so it is written also Iraq. Uh, Iran is expected to become the member of this block, and India is going to hold the presidency of this summit in 2020. Uh, after this summit, till September 2023. Now, guys, this is the beautiful historical Samarkand. Okay, I hope that uh, you also get the chance to visit such a beautiful place. It is really beautiful. Okay. Let's talk about certain geographical facts related to Uzbekistan. So you can clearly see the countries surrounding Uzbekistan. You have the Central Asia, and then Afghanistan uh, is there. Okay, and this is our India. So we are very close in border to Tajikistan. Now, guys, I hope you recognize this sea. We have discussed about this sea. This is the Aral Sea. 90% of this sea has been dried up because of human exploitation and a great danger is there on this sea so do remember this sea because it is very important and this is your caspian sea um, only lake which is named as the sea now one more important fact that i wanted to highlight is this region uh, you can clearly see that here we have the amudarya river and the shir darya river so this amudarya river is coming from the pamir a uh, plateau okay and this shir darya river is coming from this re region tian shan mountains which la are largely located in china and you have your uh, uh, this is your kyrgyzstan so from here these rivers are coming and these are falling into the aral sea okay so that is why it is all the more important and right now the concerns are that uzbekistan is not working on rejuvenating the amudarya river because uzbekistan is hell bent on using the amudarya's water for cotton industry and for mineral exploration and it has completely become oblivious of this river's needs okay so because of that also uzbekistan was in the news and was criticized so i hope that now you are aware of the entire situation okay so you can clearly see the dash 
points. That means that earlier the Samudarya river used to fall in Ar Aralsi, but due to the exploitation, it has been soaked from this area and now it is not able to meet the sea. Okay, the next question is which company has partnered with the United Nations Development Program for Lighthouse Massive, a free of charge startup partnership program to support the impact of tech startups. So here MasterCard is the right answer. Now the basic idea behind this initiative of MasterCard is to support the startups, the technology startups which are working for the society, which are working for uh, the challenges which are impacting society like climate, like uh, your um, cyber security and etc etc so such technology startups are being supported by mastercard through this lighthouse massive program uh, this program was launched in 2019 and it has helped the uh, startups who are working in climate change poverty and economic exclusion etc etc Now, guys, uh, one correction here is that this Caspian Sea is not the only lake which is named after, which is named as sea. It is the largest uh, lake you can say, which is named as the sea. The next question is, which company has launched a first of its kind AI-powered digital voice in, uh, agent? So it is ICICI Lombard General Insurance, and the basic purpose of this is to provide it's, uh, you can say ease to the customers so that they can connect with this AI chatbot, this AI platform and get their queries resolved. That is the basic idea. The next question is, how much is the market capitalization of SBIs on September 16, 2022? So here, 5 lakh crore is the right answer. Guys, SBI has become the third, uh, you can say third lender who has crossed this mark of 5 lakh crore. Okay, HDFC Bank and ICICI Bank. These two were the largest market capital, uh, capital holders of uh, India. And now SBI has held the third position. So the market capitalization of SBI is 5 lakh crore. HDFC's market capitalization is 8.52 trillion. And ICICI Bank's capitalization is 6.43. Okay, so that is the news and that is important. I hope guys you have enjoyed the session and this is the time to say goodbye to all of you. Thank you so much for watching the video.